It was a beautiful Saturday morning when my 10-year-old son and I decided to visit the local zoo. We had been planning the trip for weeks, and I was excited to show my son all the amazing animals that the zoo had to offer. As we walked through the gates, I couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement and wonder. The zoo was bustling with families and school groups, all eager to see the animals and learn more about them. We started off at the monkey exhibit, where my son was fascinated by the antics of the chimpanzees. As we watched them swing from branch to branch, I couldn't help but feel like I was being watched. It was a strange feeling, like someone was looking over my shoulder. I tried to brush it off and enjoy the rest of the trip, but the strange feeling only seemed to grow as we moved from exhibit to exhibit. The reptiles seemed to be coiled up in unnatural positions, and the lizards seemed to be staring at me with an unnerving intensity. As we walked through the bird exhibit, I couldn't shake the feeling that the birds were all watching me, waiting for me to make a mistake. And when we arrived at the big cat exhibit, I couldn't shake the feeling that the lions and tigers were all sizing me up, waiting for their chance to strike. By the time we left the zoo, I was completely on edge. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching me, waiting for me to make a mistake. I'm not sure if it was just my imagination or if something truly strange was happening at the zoo, but I know I won't be returning any time soon. As we drove home, I tried to push the strange experience out of my mind and focus on my son, who was still chattering excitedly about all the animals we had seen. But when we arrived home, my heart sank. My beloved dog, who had been perfectly healthy when we left that morning, was lying motionless on the floor. I was devastated and couldn't understand what had happened. My son and I had only been gone for a few hours, and there was no sign of any struggle or injury. It was as if the dog had simply closed its eyes and slipped away. I spent the rest of the day in a state of shock, trying to come to terms with my loss. But things only got stranger as the day went on. Later that afternoon, I went to feed the fish in the tank, only to find that all of them had vanished. The tank was empty, with no sign of any disturbance or struggle. I couldn't believe what was happening. First the strange experience at the zoo, and now the sudden loss of my dog and the disappearance of my fish. It was as if some unseen force was trying to tell me something or warn me of some impending danger. I spent the rest of the evening in a state of unease, wondering what the future held. As the days went on, I tried to make sense of what had happened. Had I simply been imagining things at the zoo, or was there something more sinister at play? And what could have caused the sudden death of my dog and the disappearance of my fish? I couldn't come up with any answers, and the strange events continued to haunt me. I knew I needed to find some closure and get to the bottom of what was happening. So, I decided to visit the zoo again, this time armed with a camera and a determination to uncover the truth. When I arrived at the zoo, everything seemed normal at first. The animals were behaving as they always did, and there was no sign of any strange activity, but as I walked through the exhibits, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The monkeys seemed to be staring at me more intensely than before, and the reptiles seemed to be coiled up in even more unnatural positions. And when I arrived at the big cat exhibit, I was sure that the lions and tigers were watching me with a sense of anticipation. I knew I had to find out what was going on, so I started snapping pictures with my camera. As I took photos of the animals, I couldn't help but feel like I was getting closer to the truth. I spent the entire day at the zoo, taking as many pictures as I could. And when I returned home and looked through the photos, I couldn't believe what I saw. In every single one of them, the animals seemed to be staring directly at the camera, as if they were trying to communicate something to me. I knew then that I had stumbled upon something truly strange and inexplicable. I wasn't sure what it all meant, but I knew that I had to find out. So, I started researching the phenomenon and trying to find answers. I spent months studying the photos and talking to other people who had experienced similar things at the zoo. And eventually, I was able to piece together a theory. I believe that the animals at the zoo are trying to communicate with us in their own way. 
They are trying to tell us something important, something that we might not understand at first. And I think that if we can just listen and try to understand what they are trying to say, we might be able to learn something truly remarkable about the world around us. I know that my theory might seem far-fetched to some people, but I can't shake the feeling that I'm onto something. And I'll continue to visit the zoo and listen to what the animals have to say, no matter how strange or unbelievable it might seem. Because I believe that there is always more to learn, and that the answers to the mysteries of the universe are waiting for us, if only we are brave enough to seek them out.